the outline of uh, our, my presentation is um, generally we'll talk about the residential market. We've just concluded 2016. So the URA just came out with their um, full detail uh, analysis of fourth quarter last year and how that compared against uh, 2015. And also the uh, home sales uh, for January also came out 15 of February, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we'll have a look at how the outlook of 2017 will be. And then, interestingly, we do a little bit of guessing where the market is going to be in the next 12 months, maybe even the next uh, two, three years. Uh. In particular, we look at the futures market. Futures market like futures trading, uh, you buy stock options, futures and all that. Here, we're looking at where the market is heading by looking at what developers price points are when they buy land in particular because that provides you the future pricing when they launch one, two years ahead uh, after they, uh, they've already bought the land and get the development approval. And then after that, we look at the summary ultimately. Now, as an introduction, uh, the residential market, this is a basic, uh, uh, we'll be covering this very, we'll be talking about these terms, uh, terminologies, and I borrowed this from uh, the, the map from Property Guru. Uh, the term, there are three regions in Singapore in accordance to what URA designated it as. And core centre region is really your, your main uh, prime districts uh, of District 9, 10, 11 and in Marina Bay as well, yeah? which is over here. This is your core centre region, which is defined as your prime cream de la cream of all properties. Uh. And then you've got properties which is your rest of centre region which is where your Bishan, your Upper Thompson, Thompson area is located. And then you've got your Geylang, Marine Parade, uh, Bukit Merah, Queenstown, Clementi. The whole envelope surrounding your, 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 your CBD, your CBD area. And this is your water catchment area. So your CBD area around it is your rest of central region. And in particular, this is really where we want to focus on to see how, what are the, where are the options are, the opportunities in this particular area. And then the third major component is your outside central region, which is deemed as your OCR. And that you have got the whole remaining universe of portfolios around it. This is what you call your suburban mass market properties, as a lot of people call it. So if you look at it, in terms of the universe of activities, if I can just put it in percentage, if you look at, let's say, last year, almost about 8,000 units was transacted, about roughly 70, 75% of the activities, uh, transactions are focused on OCR, 70-75%. Okay? And then if you look at uh, RCR, roughly about 15-20%. to 20%. Why? Because it's a smaller market. As compared to your OCR, it's a much bigger market. And on top of that, there's a lot of supply because government, when they dish out land sales program, about 80-90% of land sales program is focused on outside central region area. And then, of course, if you look at the core centre region, there are very few government sales of sites available. The bulk of the supply is coming up from redevelopment or from prime land, collective end blocks and all that. But there was a site that government just launched and it was sold last year, which is located in Martin Road. Yeah? So again, this component here is usually about 10% or less than 10%, maybe 8 to 10% in terms of total activity. Uh, if uh, you're, you want to know what is the size in terms of activity focus in terms of buying. So you go back, and this is the definition of URA of what fringe area is. So this fringe area is defined as anything which is outside central area. The central area is defined as where your ERP gantry post is, which is all your CBD Orchard Road, your Marina Bay area and all that. But once beyond that is really your fringe area, which basically means this is your core central region to an extent. And this part over here is really your rest of central region. And the whole universe above that is your suburban mass market outside central region. So that's the terminology we'll be talking about, fringe area. We'll be talking a lot about RCR later on. Uh, I'm going to skip this. This is what I prepared for radars, uh, more for educational and all that. Uh. Um, but you look at the market. So when you talk about what the property market, where it's heading and all that, there are a few things you want to talk about. One is rental. Rental provides the investor uh, an understanding where the market is going. If I'm buying for myself, I'm staying, I also want to know what is my opportunity cost. If I can rent, how much will I be getting it? Then you can calculate what your yield will be from the property. 
Or if you're buying for investments, then you need to know where the market is heading. The world is a little bit different. If you look at the market, the world actually changed quite a fair bit from 2013 onwards. Eh? This is the pivotal point. Why? Because the government came out with their sixth and last measure, well, almost last measure, where they introduced the total debt servicing ratio, 60%. And that restricted a lot of people. People who want to buy but cannot buy because they are over leveraged, they won't be able to get loan. Hence, the buying activity more or less stopped from middle, around 1st of uh, July 2013 onwards. And then you see, starting to see basically the, the prices starting to soften. Uh, in fact, not only in terms of residential, but all sectors of the market. And residential, the same thing as well. We saw the peak during the third quarter or second quarter of 2013. And then you see basically all rentals moving down roughly from the peak right up to where we are right now, about 11%, roughly. Yeah? Prices, rentals have actually come down by that much. Uh, this is the URA uh, statistics that came out. Um, fourth quarter, resi rental came down by about 1.2%. But interestingly, from the government URA statistics, uh, we found that the best performer is really your RCR sector, which is here, where the drop in terms of uh, your, your, com your actual um, rental actually dropped only by about 0.6%. Compared to uh, in core central region, 1.4% drop. And in your, sorry, I'm looking at this one here, the fourth quarter here, 0.1% compared to 0.4%, which is in core central region, and 2% in outside central region. And even the same, if you're looking at the third quarter of last year, you saw basically the, the least drop in terms of rental is in the core central region area. So there is a reason why the, the statistics shows that, because I think if you're looking at core central region, Generally, properties are, are larger. The, the, the properties in terms of tenancies are also, in terms of quantum, uh, are, are much higher in terms of total quantum. Not many people can afford it. And you're talking about top honchos. There are not many top honchos that can afford, uh, you know, penthouses in core center region area and all that. So hence, there is a, a backing up in terms of support level and RCR tend to provide that support for, for rental rentability. Now, if you look at the resale market, again, this came out from uh, the government as well. Why? Because 21.6, we saw generally a, a good performance in terms of uh, the resale market. Eh? We had about 8,400 units sold in 21.6. Compared that to 21.5, it is a jump of almost 25, 28%. Last, uh, 21.5 was about 6,600, and we were we did something like about 8,400 uh, last year. In fact, it over exceeded uh, the resale volume transaction in 21.3 as well. Remember, 21.3 is a year where TDSR was implemented. It had a, a very quiet second half of 2013 because of TDSR, but it had a fairly active first half of 21.3. But even that, your, second, your, your total volume of 2013 resale-wise was exceeded by 2016 total volume resale. So interesting to note that seems to be like a pickup in terms of uh, market activity in that sense. Uh, again, resale volume has actually gone up. This talks about where the different uh, sectors, or, or rather the different period of time. And you saw basically, if you look at 2016, the fourth quarter alone, for resale, we saw 1,900 units compared to a year ago which was fourth quarter of 2015, uh, it went up by almost 20%. So it's a huge jump of almost 32% actually. This should be year on year, sorry. But in, as a whole of 2014, 2016 compared to 2015, the increase was almost 28%. So again, we're beginning to see volume coming back in the resale market. Now, in, in fundamental, you don't have to be a guru in understanding real estate, but the first thing that you want to see in any market is whether transaction volume got increased or not. You want to see for transaction volume to increase, then any potentially there could be a possibility of price increase. Price cannot go up without volume going up. Correct? I mean, it's just common sense. Lah. But volume go up, you don't want to see huge volume of supply coming up <laughs> because then you, you can't read the market. So you want to see 
total supply coming down, you want to see activity in terms of volume, people buying, going up. And then, then that's when you know that, hey, the market is becoming bottom. And then you don't see trend, market trends. And all. These are the two, three things you need to look. And then fundamental, you need to look at rental. Rental is the, is the most important fundamental because that determines whether you can pay to your bank, whether you can rent it out, how easy to rent. That's, that's important as well. Yeah? Now, if you look at the property market, again, if you look at the uh, resale market from the peak, again, the world changed in 2013 because of introduction of TDSR. Rent, your, your prices, this is your core central region, CCR, have dropped by almost about, uh, about right, this is the third quarter. This for second quarter, it came down by another 2 3%, so it's about roughly 13%. Generally, all the prices have gone down by about 12 to about 10 to 12 percent for CCR, RCR, as well as your call center region. The word, the, this one in in uh, in grey is your rest of center region, yeah, price point. But it has gone up from 208, 2008, It has gone up by about 49 percent for call center region, for rest of center region, 61 percent, and for Outside search engine, it has gone up the most, from 539, go up all the way to as high as about 900, $900 uh, per square foot. So that is the reason why government came out with, government, with the measures, is basically to make property housing more affordable. It is really this component that they're worried because prices have gone up too much over too short a time. Now you look at the, gov at the new developers' home sales. Uh. Now this is being tracked by industry because people like to buy brand new properties. So if you look at your average supply, so again, three things you must look at. Your rental, you must look at your activity, what people are buying, how many, is it a buoyant activity market? And you need to see what's the total supply that has come up. Total supply from 2016, we use this as a gauge. As a gauge uh you look at prior to 2015, uh, your average total supply is about 23,000. This is made up of HDB, which is this color. Your EC, which is uh, this color here, EC only was, came out from 2013 onwards. You have more supply coming up. And then your private, uh, this is uh, your private properties, which is the one in pink. Uh. So if you look at the government's plan, when they came out with cooling measures, actually they came out with cooling measures as early as 2011 with ABSD, seller stamp duty and all that, they started pumping in government land sales uh, sites. And government land sales sites, when you offer it for sale, it only came out two, three years later in terms of completion, which basically saw your huge completion from 2014 onwards, 20,000 coming up. And then you had 2015, 19,000 completing. And then 2016, another 21,000 completing. So if you look at what it was post 2013, you had total supply of about 38, 39,000 units. Uh. That's a lot. So the, so the concern was then the market had just too many supply in the marketplace. Uh. So as a result, you saw prices starting to drip up to right now. But the good news is that from 2017, from here onwards, you're starting to see a drop in terms of your private supply completion of uh, non landed properties. Uh. So you only have about 14,000 as opposed to, let's say, in the previous years, about 20,000, 21,000. So that's almost a drop of almost 30, 40% already. And moving forward from 21.8 to 21.9, things looks to be less supply as compared to what it was from uh, 21.3 to 21.5. Yeah? So that's good news. Yes? Yeah. Of course. So what, what is being launched, let's say, being bought as a sales of site in 21.7, it will be pumped into completion in 1819, or roughly about three years. So it will come in from 2020 onwards. So this one, 21, 14, uh, 21.9, the estimate is probably going to be much higher because there are projects which has just got approval beginning of uh, late last year and beginning of uh, this year that might come into completion in 21.9. So the average numbers we are looking at would be about roughly 15,000. So the new norm moving from this year onwards, completion for private residential non-landed would be about 15,000 roughly. 
The new norm for HDB, eh, three years ago, new norm is about 25,000. Remember? Government came out with BTO, 25,000. Now the new norm seems to be about 17,000. This year, they're going to roll out about 17, 18,000. So that has been reduced as well. So which means if you talk about 15,000 private residential, and then HDB, 17,000, that is your new norm. Roughly, you're talking about just 30, 32, 33,000. Then maybe another 2,000, 2,005 for EC. So your average new norm should be roughly about 35,000 for the whole year, for the moving forward. Lah. That is, of course, if the, we're looking at projecting the market in future based on today's scenario. Okay, if the government you know, uh, find that there's just insufficient supply, they might roll out more, and developers buy more, then it might upset the figures that's come up in terms of your total supply residential moving forward. This talks about the supply uh, developers selling projects, uh, and this again talks about your OCR, CIS, RCR, and CCR. So the dark blue is your OCR. You know, 70, 75 percent of your activity in terms of total sales focus on OCR, and then you've got your lighter blue, which is your RCR. And if you look at, and then you've got your your CCR, uh, which is your light grey colour over here. Now, if you look at total transaction volume in 21.6, we had roughly a 10% increase from 21.5 to 21.6. Uh, in fact, you saw an uptick in terms of your RCR uh, component, uh, where RCR we saw 2,005 units sold. Developers sold more to RCR as compared to 2,015. Developer also sold more CCR, core central region units, as opposed to in 21.5. But they sold less uh, OCR unit as compared to 2015. Why? Because, again, there was a lot of supply in 2015 uh, and 2016. And also, at the same time, you look at the concerns were more employment related, economy slow, China slow, and there was a lot of problems uh, if you look at Brexit, you look at uh, you know, US, uh, new president, and all that. So there was a bit of uncertainty and all that. But, but that didn't stop the CCR and your RCR, areas like this, from outperforming 2015 uh, activity levels. Interesting to note. Lah. What, what we are beginning to see is that smart money is coming back into the market already. I'll, I'll, I'll dwell this. Who are the people who are buying? We're starting to see like core centre region, uh, like, um, like, like UOB, Mr. Wee Cho Yang has actually bought uh, Nassim Residences. We saw some of, my, some of my clients who have never been in the, who, who have left the property market started to re-enter. Like uh, Lian Huat, uh, old trading company bought Hullet, Hullet uh, Road property. Old 30-unit uh, uh, condominium uh, located in Emory Hill. And then you've got uh, another group, Sustained Land, buying Cascaden. So all of a sudden, within a spate of, Jan of December, November last year, and January this year, about 600 million worth of prime CCR properties have been sold. And that reflected in quite a number, quite a number of huge take up here. 721. Because a lot of high net worth is starting to buy. If you think the bankers are conservative, they always put money in the bank, well, guess again. They have got a sharper nose in knowing when the market is bottom it still creates the opportunity for them wanting to buy now. They can wait. They can wait for the government to relax. They can also, they can also buy their own project if they want to, correct? But they chose to go in now, of course, based on discount. If not, a lot of the developers will have to pay for qualifying certificate. Whatever discount that they don't give, they have to pay to the government. So they've got no choice. But there are people biting. It shows that the market, if you dish out a, a good discount, people will come out. And, and the people who come out are the smart money. Uh, the very people that, that are saying up there that, oh, government, market is bad and all that, but these are the people who are buying properties, you know. So the interesting part is that if you follow the track of the smart money, this is probably an interesting time to go in. So again, you look at your rental, you look at your supply, you look at your, your volume of transaction, and then now you look at who are the people who are buying. Are they foreigners? If foreigners buy, yeah, maybe they, Singapore is cheap or they don't know what they're doing. 
they just buy any. But when you have a lot of conservative bankers buying, uh, it shows interesting trend. Uh. These are people who knows when to bottom fish. Yeah? That's my opinion. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, again, if you look at the market uh, trend itself, you had the market dipping during the uh, Lehman, crisis, uh, Lehman Brothers crisis, and then it went up. Yeah? In some market, it went up as much as 70%. Uh, some markets, only 50%. All the way up, and then it started to come down. The drop in prices have been roughly about 11.6% around there, about almost 12%. And last year, prices dropped, according to government URA statistics, 2.6%. It is the lowest in the last three years. So again, we're beginning to see decrease, deceleration in terms of rate of depreciation in terms of prices. We're just looking at the, what the numbers are. We're not interpreting, but we think that there could be a sign of uh, slowing down further. Now, there are a few known launches. So keep your eye on this week, next week. Keep an eye on that. Why? Because Two projects that, that have already collected checks already. Eh? Today, uh, this developer, sorry, eh? this developer is collecting check. Today, tomorrow. Okay? This is Clementi uh, Avenue 1 under UL and Singland. Again, UL is owned by the Wee family. Lah, uh, and so is, the, so is Singland as well. Lah. So if you look at this 505 units, if, if they sell well, the market will start to, will, will, will start to uh, will work on the same, on the momentum. In other words, we're going to see more developers starting to launch projects. Right? And there might be an impact in prices as well. Huh? So all eyes this week on Clement Canopy over here. And then another project which has opened show flat. I understand collected uh, the uh, checks and they announced 10,000 people visited their show flat. You know which one? Grand Joe Park at Changi. This is under another developer. Lah. So this one, we, this developer has sold 1,000 units within one weekend before. Uh, Hyde Park, right? He, he sold that. <laughs> so we, we know that he can sell if he wants. If you've got 10,000 and you have only 500 units, uh, I think he can sell within a day lah, if he wants to. But the problem is that some developers might not want to, in today's market, thinking that volume activity has gone up, supply is coming down, a lot of old money is coming into the market supporting at today, at the bottom. Maybe they don't want to sell too fast. That could be a strategy. In, rather than last year or two years ago when the market is like that, you want to sell everything, correct? You sell everything, then you buy land. But now when the market is showing sign of bottoming, you might want to slow down. So it's interesting to see what strategy developers do and how they react towards price point and whether or not they want to sell everything. If they sell everything, good lah. That means they got a lot of land bank they want to develop. Next, they want to move on to the next project. If they don't sell everything, could be that they might want to hold this and wait for the prices to move upwards. That means they're nursing for a recovery in pricing as well. No, no developer wants to sell cheap. Yeah, they want to maximize develop, developers' profit. And then on top of that, you've got uh, this executive uh, condominium that will be uh, being, which is being developed, will be launched, I think, uh, this, this half, first half of this year. And then Seaside Residences, sometime in April, they will be launching it as well. Interesting that most of these development don't really have competitors. Like this development, it doesn't really have competitors. There are no new projects that is competing for, for attention. So there's a possibility that those projects which are well-located do not have competitors. The developers would be able to command their price and their selling pace, and they might be able to do better. That's, that's personally what I feel. So this week and next week, important to take note. <coughs> um, so you've got what has transpired also. This works on the futures market, where you're starting to see a lot of... Uh, developers starting to enter the GLS, Government Land Sales uh, Sites Program. In the past, in 2013, 2014, when the market was quiet, one site, two, three developers were bid. Maximum five developers. But these days, when you have got a government sales of site, more than 10 will come in. When more than 10 go in, only one gate, nine will still be hungry. So when another site goes into the market, 
14 goes tender, only one will get it. Another 13 will be hungry. So it's a scenario where developers are now starting to build confidence as well. <coughs> so what's in store in 2017? Uh, so we look at developer. I was talking about developer. This is the NUS Redas uh, Confidence Index. So Redas and, uh, and, and uh, NUS come out with a survey. They ask the developer every three months. Uh, Mr. Developer, where do you think the prices will be three months from now? And then they ask, is, are you going to increase your prices or not? So these are simple questions they ask. Lah. So if you look at the confidence level, this is like PMI index. Right, lah. Anything above five uh, is positive. Uh. Anything which is below five is negative. So if you look at in the past, uh, from 2011 onwards, uh, it's always been below five. Why? Because the government started their government cooling measures from 2011 onwards. So Developers are always negative. So the negative point is when it went down well below five. This was all the negative points. But it's up and down, you know. In 2011, whenever a measure was introduced, the, the market picked up even faster, surprisingly. Only when the sixth measure came out in 2013, the TDSR, that slowed the market permanently because that, that curtailed the ability to borrow. If you cannot borrow, even you want to buy, you cannot buy. That's the problem. So, what happened was that from 21.3 onwards, if you look at here, it started to come down. Every three months when uh, the survey goes to developers, developers say, oh, negative, oh, very bad, oh, tough. Lah. And then now, all of a sudden, from 21.5, 21.6, it started to go up already. And the recent survey, it shows generally that developers are saying, I think the market we are getting used to government saying there's not going to be any relaxation of government control. I think life will go on. We like the volume that's coming into the market. We think we might not need to be so aggressive in dishing out discounts anymore. Okay? So this is what they're saying. So if you look at the latest, the number have actually gone up to about 4.6. It's coming up to the 5. Once 5 happen, price increase already. That means developers say, I'm going to move prices up already. So a lot of developers are beginning to clear stock. The clearing of stock, as what you rightly mentioned, a lot of them are giving discount, but those are, your those are affected by qualifying cert. Those where developers need to sell by a certain number of years, and then within two years after TOP, are those that are giving discount. But those projects, one apartment is $6 million. Not everybody have that. Some penthouse, I just saw one, uh, Far East uh, penthouse is about $40 million, one penthouse. So not everybody can afford that. But People like Faiz can hold, but there are people who are maybe mid-sized developer, not listed, they cannot hold, so they will give a discount. And who are the people who are buying? The smart money is coming. The smart money are people who have entered the Singapore market but haven't, haven't surfaced in the last two, three years, and now they are surfacing. These are the people you've got to look out for. Uh, so if you look at January this year, developers are off to a good start. Uh, even without launching any project, uh, these are headlines uh, by a newspaper. Uh, why? Because they said, I, they said actually without launching any project, uh, it was 17% per, higher year on year compared to January 2015. Yeah? Uh, this is the one uh, where the banker has bought 411 million. Uh, this shocked the market, but it also, people said it was a very smart move in buying because he has got a good nose to. to to, to smell the bottom of the market. This one talks about potentially, if you look at where peop, your price, property price index, this is your property price index, and this is your GDP growth. Eh? We're no longer going to see this kind of GDP growth eh, where we had you know, 8, 10% growth. Even 6% growth that the government wanted originally, uh, 4 to 6%, it's not going to happen. So it's likely that we are going to look towards a 1.52% to 2 to 3%. Ideally, 2 to 3% or 2 to 4%. Below 2% is below mark expectation. Fourth quarter last year, we grew about 1.8%, which was strong or stronger than market expectation. So the market tend to move up a little bit. So the, the sense is that the government is, uh, is pumping in a lot of infrastructure projects, construction projects. Lah. If you look at, uh, if you talk to uh, BCA, uh, um, BCA 
is proposing things that is going to be about 28 billion of construction happening here. The bulk of it is public construction. Cavens la, they're going to build MRTs la, your you know cross cross uh, lines and all that. So all that will all that will create jobs and all that will obviously have benefit in terms of building amenities like when they built Thompson line over here. The people that benefits are the people who are living around here, are the people that are buying property in this area. Because the money put by the government is not paid by you. But you happen to be there, you will benefit in terms of appreciation, in terms of the capital, capital appreciation. Right? So, so the, the infrastructure, your, your government expenditure, will, is likely to see the government hitting target in terms of achieving their 2 to 3%. Lah. If you ask me, I think they're going to do that mainly, especially from the Committee of Future Economy and their budget. There's going to be a lot of uh, pumping in, in terms of government expenditure to boost up uh, the GDP. That's primary number one. And we think that on this basis, of course, if the world, there is no setback, no calamity around the world, we think there could be an inflection point looking sometime towards the second half of this year. Inflection means the market has been moving down. At some point, it's a cycle, it's got to inflect and, and go up. Lah. Or it could change direction and move flat. We don't know what the direction will be. But that inflection point is likely to be seen towards the middle of the year. Yeah? And that's when we say the market is bottoming. We cannot say the market has bottomed. If the market moves up, then the market has bottomed. But then we need to see whether it's sustained recovery or not. And nobody can tell whether it has bottom or not unless you've gone past the bottom, you look behind, yeah, actually that bottom already. Now we are 5% up. Lah. There's, there's a guy who, who bought, uh, what, what are my mentor, David Lawrence, I don't know if you know him, he, he used to be my boss, Richard Ellis. He said, nobody can, can buy property at the bottom of the market, nobody. But, he, that was Willock, uh, he said, but he don't mind buying when it's 10% off the market. That means when you show a sign that the market has already picked up, he will pick up property. Because nobody can buy at the bottom, bottom of the market, which is true. You know? So the people who are buying, like, your, like, like UOB and all that, they're buying, they, are, they think that the market is bottom. So that's why they're entering. Even if the market goes down a little bit, you are looking, looking after your, bot, your, your downside already. The downside, you are looking after already. How much lower can it be? Because land prices are going up. When you look after your downside, the upside will look after itself. Because the, the government's building infrastructure, which is not, they're not asking you to pay for the infrastructure. They are paying it. You are just sitting there waiting for the infrastructure to come up, and then you have that appreciation. Yeah? <coughs> yeah, correct. Correct, correct. Exactly, correct. Uh, so you look at the residential supply, again, this is a repetition of what we have just now. 50,000 average supply, 21.4 to 21.6, but you have about roughly 35,000. This is HDB, inclusive of your, your, uh, your EC, inclusive of uh, residential, uh, private. So this is going to be the long-term trend line. Yeah? Uh, this talks about your demand. Uh, with, we were beginning to see generally your private supply coming down. Your absorption has actually gone up because 21.6 to 21.5, you've seen more activity coming up already in terms of uh, uh, deals done. Developers selling more units uh, on a year-to-year -year basis by 10%. Now, now, if you look at the economic weakness, uh, of course, economy, global economy will impact Singapore because Singapore is a small economy. Um, but we think the market is at an inflection point, which means it could be like this, and then it's just stable for a while. We call it a, a long U, a long U. Or it could be a sharp V. All depend on what the global economy and how Singapore handles itself in the next uh, 12 months in particular. We're beginning to see increase in sale volume, not only in terms of developer sale, but resale as well, uh, which is a sign that people are getting confident. People are buying second-hand properties. And with uh, the government dishing out government grant for resale for HDB, that resale market for HDB will also go up. Yeah? We are beginning to see 
private residential stocks decreasing already. So the stock that's available for sale has started to decrease already right now. And you've got limited government land sales program. All of a sudden, government is not dishing out as many government land sales program as what they did 2011, 2012, 2013. Now, maybe one every three months. Last time, one month, two or three uh, sales of site program. So they are beginning, they understand there's a lot of supply that's in the marketplace. And even though the market is strong, people might buy, but at the end of the day, when it's completed, you have a problem. Who's going to rent? Who's going to occupy? So they have slowed down the GLS knowing that the market has actually been trending downwards for 13 consecutive quarters already, since third quarter of 21 three. You've got buyers still looking to buy because there's still liquidity out there. You know? There's still money in, this, in the banking system because low interest rates. But again, low interest rate, not for long. This year, we know that interest rate is going to go up ultimately. But again, it's not a sense that it is going up, but it's more normalization of interest rates. It's becoming normal what we are used to. There's no signs of government uh, removing any measures. So the fatigue, there's a lot of fatigue factor. People are waiting, waiting, and nothing's happening. Buy, sell, buy. Because there is a sign of market bottoming. And the price decrease is slowing down, like 21.6. Uh, or 21.6, yeah. The, the price decrease of 2.6% decrease is the smallest decrease compared to the last three years. So this is the futures market. Uh, just a quick session. Um, if, you look at, if you look at four or five previous exercises, I don't want to go through all that, but if you analyze it, you find that the market for land actually bottom. Uh, land prices actually bottom for government land sales in 21.4, beginning of 21.5. It came down by about 10, 15%. And then slowly now it's starting to go up already. So if you look at some of the latest land sales, I use this as an example uh, where MCL Land actually bought uh, a piece of land in uh, Margaret Drive for $997 per square foot per plot ratio. This was done December 2nd last year. And then the previous land sales which was done was in Dundee Road. This was your MCC Land's Queen Pink. This was done at $871 per square foot, reflective of more than 15% upside already. Yeah? From 21.5 June to December 21.6, double digit increase already. And then in 21.12, it was, uh, this was Commonwealth Tower, the price was higher than in 21.5. So you see an interesting trend over here that to get sites, developers will have to pay much higher. When developers pay higher land, means it translates to higher price per square foot. So assuming that uh, this, this, this one uh, by CDL, they are, launch, they, they, they are selling this at about roughly 1,006, 1,007 around that per square foot. These guys, when they launch it, they will have to launch it much higher than this because their cost of capital is much higher. So definitely much higher than, uh, than, than uh, Queen's Peak. Queen's Peak is selling about roughly 1,630. These guys will have to sell between about 1,7 to 1,8. So if you look at the futures pricing, this is just an analysis in it. Lah. Of course, developer can cut prices. Lah. You know, they make provisions and then, okay, I'm going to sell at 1,005. But no developers wants to cut prices to enter into a land transaction and then don't make money. Which developer do that? So when they buy a land at, at, 000, at $997 per square plot ratio, they want to make money. To make money, margin is about 10, 15% developer profit. You need to sell at about 1718. So from here, we can actually see that developers are already future pricing the project in the same locality much higher than what it is right now. So again, the futures market in the next 12 to 24 months seems positive. Again, that's another way of us understanding that the market has bottomed. And it could be a recovery in terms of pricing because developers tend to control your GLS uh, land sales sites uh, selling price. So again, this has been confirmed by the Minister of uh, National Development. They're not going to release, uh, not review, no relaxation of cooling measures. Confirmed. So if you're waiting, sitting on the sidelines, it's not going to happen. Yeah? Now, <clears throat> these are some questions that uh, the, 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 to, to make it more palatable to our presentation, which is City Fringe. Lah. So why is City Fringe uh, an important market? In any city which is undergoing rapid urbanization, eh, Singapore is one of them. Uh. City fringe area provides home buyers uh, with affordable home option. Uh. And it also sets highest capital appreciation as well. Now, if you look at right now, the trend uh, 
it seems like your call center region price point is starting to, to move upwards already. Well, it, 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 it seems like because there are volume of transaction. You need volume to justify an uptick already. And, but not many people can afford the call center region. But at the same time, the, the outside center region, that's where the bulk of the supply is, uh, you know? and that has, has grown the most. 75% since uh, the global financial crisis right up to, uh, to 2013. And that's the, the component that the government wants to cool. They want to see more downside in terms of price point itself. But if you look at where we are right now, we're in a sweet spot in terms of your RCR region, where prices are more palatable. You can buy for your own occupation. You can also buy for your own investment. And RCR region, as what we, meant, what we saw, it seems to have the highest, uh, the lowest decrease in terms of rental. So if you're at some point looking into leasing it out in 12 months' time, I think this, this project is what, completing in 12 months' time maybe. So there could be an opportunity to be able to rent it at, uh, at a good rental. The, today's market is still oversupply, eh, I must tell you, in terms of rental. Eh. It's hard. But the, 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 the period you hold to find a tenant, that's important. <laughs> Finding a tenant, once you find a tenant, you keep it for two years, the market will recover. From 2018, 2019, I think you should be able to see a steady increase in terms of capital appreciation and hopefully I think rental as well. But the immediate thing is next 12 months, you want to find a tenant. So it shows that your RCR in the previous slide, your, it is the rental movement drop has been the least compared to all regions itself. Yeah? Why? Because OCR has got a huge problem oversupply. CCR, too expensive. Lah. Who got budget of 10,000 ever, correct? Because the bulk of your experts are usually your Asian-based experts or middle management experts who are coming in, whose budget is less than 8,000 or 5,000 and below. That's plentiful. Yeah? And they want to stay in town. They don't really want to stay in Chua Chukang or Pongo. This is an ideal, this is a sweet spot. So as I mentioned over here, it has got a sweet spot in terms of RCR and also capital precision as well. Yeah? And also 20% of all transactions are located in the RCR area. Now, will you, how will you benefit uh, from making a property investment in the city fringe location? Uh, if you look at any of the uh, location, I think city fringe is interesting. If you look at the map, you've got a whole map of Singapore. You've got the CBD in the middle. And then the government is developing suburban centres, which is regional centres of Tampines. And then you've got your Jurong Gateway. And you've got Woodland. And then you've got your... RCR region, which is right in the middle surrounding all this. So which means it doesn't matter where your tenants are working or where you are working. You can work in Jurong, you can work in Tampines, or you can work in the CBD. You are in between the buffer of these two. If you are in the suburban area, then of course it matters. Because if you are in Jurong, you don't want to be working every day and committing to, uh, to Tampines in that sense. So it provides a sweet spot in terms of locality for your CCR fringe location. Eh? It is also preferred like, because the MNCs, again, as I mentioned, are budget tight. They, they're conscious on that. They, they, don't, they want convenience. They want to stay in CCR, but they cannot afford that. So this seems to be a sweet spot for them as well. <coughs> These are some of the top selling projects uh, in 2017. I, was I took this from URA and Morgan Stanley. Eh? And Thompson Impressions was uh, one of the top projects sold uh, last, uh, last month. Now, the value proposition, just add this into a value proposition for Thompson uh, Impression. I think, I think whenever you buy something, as well, just to recap, before you buy something, Buy something which is strategic location because there's a lot of supply. There's still a lot of supply in the marketplace. And when you buy, you want to rent. If you're buying for investment, you want to rent. So think about the amenities that's available. Think about whether or not there are MRTs around. If there are MRTs around, likelihood that you can rent it out. But the appreciation factor would have already been combed by the owner or the developer. Not, you buy a property which is prime, don't expect prices to go up too high, but it was sustained at that level. But if you buy a property where you've got infrastructure coming up, like MRTs coming up, 
there is a propensity for prices to come up nearer to the completion. This Thomson will be completing, the line will be completing about 2022 20, around there. So you know at some point of time when the stations are open, there would be an appreciation, usually 5-10%. Okay, but that's a good proposition to have compared to none at all. No infrastructure at all that's opening. All right? Always keep a lookout for properties which are near to seas, near to the sea, like seaside, uh, near to the sea. People like uh, canals, uh, parks, golf courses. Here you've got interesting golf courses like, because that gives a view. Singapore is all about view because if not, you've got to look at other people's properties. It's going to be quite, you know, it's hard to have your differentiation factor how to rent, how to sell, you want something which has got a differentiated factor. And also retail amenities, close by is an added value. So this part over here, I think there's a lot of shopping centres in the market over here. Take note that anywhere there is shopping centre, values tend to go up or there is a higher propensity in, one, in ab able to rent it out as well. Yeah? Uh, this I thought was quite interesting because uh, one agent brokered this deal, DBSS, for 1.1 million. So if you think that HDB, DBS, this is still HDB, you know? DBS is still HDB, it's, done by, it's, it's managed by town council. And this was sold almost $1,000 per square foot. And this is in Bishan area. And I've not heard of anything which is in CCR, HDB sold at $1,000 per square foot. So it shows that people are discerning. When investors buy even for DBS, DBSS, uh, they want to buy a, a locality where it is, it is prominent. Uh. It doesn't have to be prime, it doesn't have the CCR, but even within your fringe area or within your, your rest or central region, you can still find a jewel because of the value proposition, the infrastructure that's coming up, maybe the schools nearby or the shopping or the golf courses that's available. So take all that into consideration when you invest. Uh, in summary, my last slide, I know I've taken more longer than expected. We think the market has hit rock bottom already. But we don't know whether it's going to be a, a straight U or it could be a, a gradual uptick. Eh? Uh, that we need to see. Like, and, and there's a lot of uh, global economy that will determine our, our path as well. New home sales are expected to rise this year. We think it's going to go up at least 10% compared to last year's figures. Futures market show that land tenders pointing towards moving up in terms of pricing. We think the inflection point is likely in 21.7 likely towards the second half, uh, bearing any severe uh, economic downturn. The CCR region has so, shown a sign of bottoming already. So the next sector is going to be your RCR region. And then projects located near to MRTs or upcoming MRTs, Thompson Line, your TELs uh, or retail malls are likely to do well. With that, that ends my, uh, my presentation.